Hey everyone, Paul and Sam, welcome to another At The Bench update. So, it's been a week of ups and downs, and mainly downs, unfortunately. Um, the Peugeot, the golden black Peugeot, uh, sadly, um, yeah, it's ended up like this. Sadly, yeah. The 2K I was talking about last time, the Splash 2K, I got a little bit, not flack, but I got a bit of criticism about the 2K. Um, that, you know, people who use Splash 2K, no problems, yada, yada, yada. It's the old, I've had no problems, so there can't be problems. No one's ever saying that. Even a UMP, there never is. You know, it, it's one of those things. If there's a problem, there's a problem it needs dealing with. Um, I had three issues, two of them totally separate from each other, with that single bottle of 2K. Uh, on the Porsche 911 did, the rep one, I had a hazing on a couple of the um, arches. And on the Ferrari, had a reaction on the roof, and on the Peugeot, had a reaction with the metallic paint. Now, could it have been me, like I said last time? Possibly, yes. Just seems a bit weird that the single bottle of paint has an issue um, on three separate occasions kind of thing. But anyway, that's by the by. So, working on the Peugeot, looking at it, was not happy with the finish at all. Spotted a few other areas where it had a reaction like the Ferrari, like on the front bumper, so on and so forth, and I wasn't happy. And I literally sat there for an hour one night thinking, right, what should I do? Should I persevere, work through it, finish it and just get it done? I'll never be happy with it, it'll always bug me. I've got a couple of kits like that in the case that need redoing. And I thought, yeah, I'll do that. And then I sat there thinking, I've probably got another six, seven hours work here. I thought, is it really worth doing? And I sat there for literally an hour pondering this. And I thought, if I don't do something, I'm going to sit here all night. It's going to annoy me and piss me off even more and more and more. So I made the decision to snap the kit in half. Not like a petulant child, not like a spoiled brat, um, but just to get it out of the way. It was done. Couldn't be finished. No going back. So I need a new body shell. I've got 12 of those kits, so I'm fine there. They're not the most expensive kit. You can pick them up for like 20 odd quid. So when the decals come back in stock, which I'm waiting on, I'm going to buy them again and we're going to redo it. Now, the clear coat. This got me thinking. <clears throat> My Pro Range Clear is good. Really good. For the money, it's unbeatable. It lays down well. But lately, I've been getting different finishes and I think it's down to me changing the way I'm spraying slightly. Trying different things, as you all know, over the past few months, I've been trying different ways. And I sat down and started watching some real body sprayers on YouTube, seeing the way they're doing it. And I figured out a couple of things I think I'm doing wrong. Number one, I'm too close. I'm spraying too close to the model. Um, I am literally three inches away when a lot of people, even the spray guns, are quite a distance away. So I thought, right, let's bring the distance back a little bit. Um, and let's try that. And obviously keep the prep as good as possible. So what I did as well, on one of the recommendations of one of these guys I watched, he recommended um, this Quartz, this stuff, Quartz 2K. Um, so it's brilliant, it went down well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, spraying full size cars is different to spraying model cars. So I went out and bought it, it wasn't cheap. Uh, it's about 35 quid for the set. Sam bought it in the end because he's nuts. Um, and I sprayed it. I used a Porsche body that I used for the decal and vid on the UMP Solution, sprayed it, and it looked fantastic out the gun. Really, really good. Um, sprayed it exactly how they'd said, um, thin 5%. And then I came back to it three hours later and it looked like this. And I was like, oh my God, what's happened there? So no idea what's happened there, thinking, what the hell is that? And then I sat there thinking about it. And I remember mixing the two to one clip. I'm very meticulous on how I do things, so I remember if how it happens. I remember mixing the two to one clip. I went to strain it and I thought, I haven't thinned it. Put the 5% thinner in and then I don't remember mixing the thinner in at all. Don't remember staring it in. So there's a possibility the first couple of coats went on with a mass of thinners, like way too much, and it's a possibility that's what it did. So I'm blaming me for that one. So the Porsche body went foobar, it was wrecked, and I thought, damn it, I've spent this money, did in the end. I thought, right, let's do some tests. So when we go overhead in a minute, we'll have a look, but I sprayed up a load of spoons. I had, they were actually already sprayed. So what we've got there, we've got blue, uh, orange, yellow, and four reds now they're a mixture of zero and tamia in the colors and i sprayed them with uh, the quartz 2k in different ways um, which i'll explain in a minute and i sprayed some pro range 2k and i'll show you the results in a minute so i think the actual way the reaction on the body went on the porsche that was me just my fault i hold my hands upon that 
So I thought, right, let's do a control. We'll do the spoons and let's see what kind of finish we get. Does it beat the pro range? Well, does it? You can see in a minute. We'll have a look. So, Peugeot's out the window. It's gone. So I thought, right, what do we do next? The F40 is exactly how it was last week. I really need to work on it, but with stuff like this happening, it, it's killed my mojo a little bit this week. Um, so it's there. The body is all done. Um, it's all 2K, as you saw last time. Not too bad, the body on that one. Quite happy with that. That's fine. Um, all the engine that's primed, ready to go over there. So that's not a problem. So I thought, right, I'm going to start something else. So I thought, right, Sam's on holiday this week. I'm going to pick something um, I've wanted to do for a while. Sam did have, but never finished. And I thought, I'm going to finish this. So I picked Tamiya's 24 scale Volvo A50, the saloon. I've done the estate. It's in there somewhere. Um, and I thought, right, let's do this. I did plan to do Rydal's car. <laughs> we're actually in a minute. We're doing Tim Harvey's now because the decals went wrong. Uh, yeah, the, one of the number 15 just kind of imploded in the water on me. Uh, it didn't fall apart, it just wrapped itself up on itself because I, I pulled it off too quick. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Um So, I'll show you where we're at with this. And you've got to laugh at the price. It's got the original BT, £17.54 on the box. Um, I paid like 50 odd quid for this, which is still cheaper than it. So, that's what we started. We've got good progress on that. So, that's going well. Um, we've got the video build I want to do as well. We spent some money. A lot of people asked. I'm rambling today. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. I've got so much to get through in this bench update. I don't want to be here all day because it's really warm outside. It's currently 20 degrees outside, but it feels so much warmer. 61% humidity. Um, so I want to get out there. I can spend the day with the family. Um, so, yeah. Um, video build. Yeah, we're waiting on decals of Frankie. So I'm not starting to look at those. Spent a bit of money. We've got a new camera mount. Look at that. We much better, much much better. We're using this camera now, which worked fantastic last time. Good reports back on the audio. Um, I bought extra batteries for it. I bought two extra batteries and a different charger as well, so I can keep going. The batteries, the batteries on as big in this as my old camcorder. Um, and overhead, it's getting much better quality video. So we're ready to go there. We're just waiting on the decals on the kit. Now I don't think I've reviewed the Tamiya GT3 kit. Can't remember the Mercedes. Would you like to see it reviewed before I build it? Or should I just have a quick root through the box on my next bench update? You let me know what you think. You're probably all switched off because I'm rambling like hell today. But it's one of those weird rambles where my brain's all over the shop. Um, yes. Right, a couple of bits of post this week. A bike I had ages ago and got rid of. And I've wanted for a while. Got that. Lovely. And a car kit I've wanted for a long time as well. And you pay silly money for. And I got that as well. Um... Basically, me and Tim went in on each other. <laughs> hey, that sounds bad, doesn't it? Uh, went in with each other um, and bought a load of kits, um, pick kits we wanted, and we're going to move the rest on. Um, so essentially, hopefully, they'll end up owe me nothing, which would be great if they do. So if you're interested in buying some kits, I probably we'll probably stick up on the forum at some point today. So go to ISM's sales page. Um, just view aircraft, armour bits and bobs some cars on there as well so go on over there all of you want to know message tim timothy Iverts. don't bombard him but message him and he'll tell you what we've got or me i can send you the pics as well um so look lucky to get those especially that dbs it's hard to find now so really happy getting that and uh yeah good to add them to the stash or another bike to add to the stash i've got no room there so i don't know where it's going to go but we'll figure that out later um the gt build ends tonight uh, I believe it's a GT. It is GT build ends tonight. So hopefully we get a few more finishes today. It'd be great. And I'm going to put a post up tomorrow asking for pics of all the uh, completed builds. And I'll show them in an expansion update. The uh, wheeled uh, GB on the forum ends tonight as well. Uh, I'm looking for some other guys to volunteer to do some judging. And I'll just keep it close friends for now. Uh, once that's judged, I will go through the builds on here. We'll share uh, screen on the forum and go through a look at all the finished builds. Don't do a full reveal video. Um, Lean on me does those. He's very busy at the minute. He's moving house at the minute. So we're just going to do that for this. Um, and we've also got a new sponsor for that build as well. Um, sadly, the guy who said he was going to sponsor it last time has let us down. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to name names. Um, said he was going to send out a load of prizes and nothing's appeared at all. And it's a shame because they were really nice prizes as well. Uh, but broken promises, there's only so far we can go. We've asked, I've asked repeatedly, 
Um, Lee's been in contact. He's been in contact with Lee. And we got we got nothing back at all. So we're just going to cut our losses there. And myself and Lee are going to foot the bill. And we'll sponsor it instead. So if you go to the Wheel GB um, on the forum, uh, you'll see all the prizes have been altered. And we've added ultimate products on there. The next GB starts tomorrow, and that's the tracks and wings one. Anything tracked or the fly. So basically any armoured vehicle or civilian vehicle, emergency vehicle that runs on tracks. Um, or anything that flies, basically. It's a very, very generic group build for good reasons. So we'll have to get as many people as we can involved. That starts tomorrow. The build, the threads, forums up for that over there as well. And the GBs from now on are sponsored by E-Models. So we've got some nice prizes up there as well. So go over and have a look. Like I say, my GT build ends tonight. The Ferrari one's on until the 19th of July as well. Uh, and I'm sure we'll think of other ones as and when we come. If you've got any ideas, pop them in the chat. For me, they've got to be car related because that's all we're building at the minute. I'm sorry. A lot of people don't like that, but it's just what I'm building. Um, and that's that. Nothing else really to talk about, is there? Um, yes, there is. I forgot. Um, yes, click at you. Um, so, yeah, live show. We, we've we been doing live show for three years now. A little over three years. Um, Jermaine, it was actually Jermaine who brought up. Me and Norman were talking the other day. And Norman mentioned about maybe bringing back some techniques again. Um, which is brilliant. The, Norman did some great techniques. I'm sure some of the other guys can as well. So we'll definitely implement that. So um, on Friday, we'll start asking for ideas, for techniques you'd like to see, um, things like that. Try, try and make sure it's not something that, you know, have been covered in videos uh, or, you know, flogged to death uh, on other places and what have you. But if you've got any ideas for any techniques you'd like to see on the live show, they've got to be pretty short and easy to do. Uh, if you've got anything like that you want to do, let us know. Uh, Jermaine had the idea of spicing things up a little bit. Maybe we should bring back the interviews we used to do. We used to do interviews a while back, quite Q&As. Um, so Jermaine's going to be in charge of those. Our first interviewee is going to be Al McNeish, who you'll see on the live show. He's one of our moderators on the Facebook page as well. So he's going to be on there. And we also kind of thought of bringing back the two-hour speed builds as well. We've not done one for a while. They're great fun. Yeah. Uh, so this coming Friday, uh, if you've seen on Facebook, we're going to do another two-hour speed build, and it's only 172 Airfix kit uh, aircraft. So I picked mine. I've gone for the Jet Provost, the red one, uh, and a few of the guys have picked theirs out. And literally, the rules are uh, to start a kit. So it's when we get the paints and the glue and the brush. Now I was going to make them all use the glue at first, but the poly tube glue wouldn't dry. Not in two hours. You're not going to get anywhere with it. So we decided, right, you can use the you've got to use the paint out the box with the brush, nothing else. Um, you can use a knife to cut parts out the sprue and clean parts up. Uh, Tamiya extra thin is allowed purely for speed of gluing bits together. And you can use water for your decals to thin your paint and clean your brush, and that's it. So literally water, paint brush that comes with the kit, the paint that comes with the kit, a knife and tamiya extra thin. That's it, and the kit. Nothing else. Two hours. We'll be live. So make sure you come and join us. Come and have a laugh. We've done these many times before. We were watching back a few very old ones last night. Because uh, I've got hundreds of old hangouts on my old um, YouTube channel, which is an ISM. And we were watching them back. And yeah, some quite funny moments in there. We used to drink during them. We'd take shots through them. And we'd all end up pretty inebriated. And uh, yeah, it was fun. But it ended up getting quite raucous. And I don't think we can have that on ISM. So yeah, Friday, speed build, two hour, make sure you're there, come on over and say hello. Uh, the week after, um, we're going to alternate, these different things are going to be every other week when Tim's not doing his bit, so it keeps the show c continuous and uh, keeps the time length pretty good as well. So um, this week's speed build, next week Tim's kit, week after be Al's interview, so on and so forth. And if you've got any ideas, let us know for sure. So there you go, I've rambled on for 15 minutes about utter nonsense. Let's go overhead, let's have a look at these, and then we'll come back and I'll rub on for a bit more about more nonsense. Right, okay, uh, overhead to the bench. So what we'll do first, we'll have a look at the Volvo, then we'll have a look at the uh, spoon results, and have a little chat about the 2K. Hopefully this is better now, it's a much better angle. Um, it's directly overhead now, um, and we can zoom in and out pretty easily. Uh, hopefully... It's nice and clear. So there we go. Right, so have a look at this. So this is uh, Tamiya's Volvo A50. It's a saloon. Uh, I've done the estate before. We did that quite some while back. 
Um, this has got the SK decals on it because my Tamiya decals are absolute toast. They've well and truly gone, um, all cracked and well and truly past saving there. That is for sure. Um, pretty much done with the decals. There are some optional decals um, that it says you can put on should you wish, but they're all over the place. Yeah, 61, 65. There's, there's optional ones. So I thought, no, we'll stick with what's on the scheme. And that's what we're going for. So the decals went down great. No issues at all. Uh, need a little bit of touch up in places um, just where they needed force in like the door handles in here and what have you. But other than that, no problems at all. Gone down really well. Typical SK decals. Really nice. So there we go. That's all ready for 2K. Uh, we're going to give it a wash later on today. And so I sent all the door panels, etc. And then we're going to 2K it um, probably on Tuesday or so. And um, yeah, we'll get it all shiny. Uh, using the 2k we're going to talk about in a second um, so that's that that's all done the roll cage is all built up uh, ready for spraying as is the dash and what have you uh, door cards chassis has all been painted up as well just like the body this was primed in UP white uh, didn't bother doing the inside so it's going to get primed black for silver um, primed UP white and then sprayed in t uh, decanted TS26 white Thinned a little bit with level and thinner through the UMP Apex. So that's exactly how the body was done as well. So that's where we're at with that. Hopefully this one will get crushed in half. It also does suffer from the painted tid Volvo window lean. Every single one of these Volvos I've seen, be it saloon or estate, those A pillars are pushed over and crushed. I'm pretty sure at the factory they came exactly like that. You can see that one's pushed over. A bit. This is definitely one of the least pronounced ones I've seen. You can see it there a little bit. You see the distance between that side. Yeah, you can see how it's lent over. It's very minimal on this. It was worse on my state, but it's it's definitely there on that one. Right, I've got nothing else to show because, like I say, the Ferraris as it was last time. So we're literally how we are today. Now, like I said, we did the uh, quartz 2K. Let me just grab some spoons i sprayed up a whole range of spoons let me just get them in order that's a single wear that's a semi so what we did we're going to be in colors there we are so what we did we sprayed up a load of spoons this is all the quartz 2k now i've done a multitude of different ways of spraying to test it. The way this is supposed to be done is um, near full wet coat, thin 5% to 10%, and then a full wet coat after a thinned 5 to 10%. A bit difficult to do on a car because you risk damaging your decal, so I didn't do that. So what we've got here is we've got several different ways of doing it. So what we've got is a tack coat. So that's a pretty thin mist over tack coat so it's not really showing any gloss at all but you can see it's gone on i've then done a wet coat not full but it was a wet coat and then a full wet coat each one of these are 10 minutes in between so this is tammy ts and this is zero so it's an orange and a yellow and as you see it's given a good finish there's no bad reactions the paint reactions there are from the paint underneath these are test spoons i've done a long time ago and then cleared so that was already there that was a floor in the paint not the 2k so we've had no reactions like i saw on the body at all it's a decent shine so on and so forth it's not bad at all um so no problem there that's with a tack coat a near full and a full i then did a semi wet coat um and then a wet coat, thin 5% each time. So that's a near enough, um, it, it's like halfway between a full and a wet coat. You can see it going down, but it's not fully glossy. So it looks like a really terrible clear coat the first time you put on. Again, over Tamiya and over Zero. And again, we got a decent 2K finish. It's not perfect though, as you can see. Now at the top of that one, um, a few of these spoons touch, so ignore the tops. Just look at the centers where they were all together a few of them touched together as you do but as you can see overall it's it's glossy it's not a great finish but it is glossy so that was semi-wet and wet i then came in and did the single passes like it was saying so that's a near full wet coat and then a wet coat thin five percent again and again it's given a nice glossy finish 
but there are flaws in the finish which you'll see properly in a minute so if i grab one of these and we'll go with the tammy one to keep it fair now all of those however they were sprayed have the same level of finish to them there's no difference there's no reactions none are better than others in my opinion they're all pretty much equal in the quality of their gloss so they're all quartz this is uh, the quartz over Tamiya, and that was a single wet and a wet. And then this is uh, my pro range over uh, zero and Tamiya. Now, what we did on this, so that quartz is a single wet and a wet, so near enough a full wet coat and a wet coat, exactly how it's told to be sprayed. I was told on this one, it should get a semi-wet tack coat, uh, unthinned, and then thinner 5% wet coat another five percent wet coat and it's exactly what i did on this one so this is add a semi-wet tack coat a wet coat and a wet coat and this one i did with a semi-wet coat and a wet coat that's how i sprayed the nsx last time and i think this is the way i'm going to spray them now this is over tamiya paint so the finish on those i would say doing the single semi-wet coat so these are both pro range. This is um, the semi-wet, a wet, and a wet. So there's two wet coats on that. This is a semi-wet and a wet. The single wet coat is better. If you follow the light, I would say the single wet beats it on clarity. Not a lot, not a lot, um, but it is there. There's definitely a clarity. Uh, there's more of a gloss on the single fully wet coat so that's how we're going to do it exactly like i said before we're going to do it a bit more distance like i did on this uh we're going to give it a single semi-wet coat 10 minutes come back thin it's going to be thinned five percent all the way through and then we're going to come back and hit it with a full wet coat and leave it alone and as you can see out the gun out the airbrush that's a pretty damn nice 2k that's not bad at all that's not been polished or sanded or touched it's exactly how it came out the gun now this is the comparison for me this is the quartz this stuff costs twice as much as this now sprayed exactly how it should be sprayed semi wet so near it says semi but it was a near full wet coat and a wet coat thin five percent single passes i put single passes on it to make sure that i knew it was a different one it doesn't make sense to you but it does to me so this this is the quartz if i go through the light You'll see the light's not quite as crisp. Ignore the, the buggers and goobers in there and dust and what have you. If I go through the pro range, if we do them together, the clarity of the pro range is definitely crisper. So there we go. While I had a reaction on the car, I think that was down to me. On the spoons, it's a bit more controlled. And these were left to air dry at about 21 degrees Celsius, which it was on the day which is a perfect temp for uh, drying 2K. And as you can see, for me, the Pro Range trumps it quite considerably, I would say. Now, this may polish up really well, um, but with that reaction I got on the car, it kind of put me off. If that happens on a, like this Volvo, I cry, literally cry, because this is irreplaceable. Um, not irreplaceable, but it costs a fortune. So it just shows the Pro Range, beautiful finish out the gun. I know these are different colours by the way, so ignore the depth of colour. We're looking at that clarity of the 2K. This one doesn't look as crisp to me. There's flaws. This one is beautiful. Absolutely lovely. So there we go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stick with the Pro Range. We're going to do a semi-wet coat and a single wet coat from 4 to 6 inches away at about 30 psi like recommended and we're going to thin it about five percent and let's see what we get now the volvo is not going to be the best guinea pig because it's white and the white 2ks don't show up as good as these colors but i'll pick something bright next time and we'll really see what kind of shine we can get it's been a bit of a waffle today about 2k and i apologize it's boring but for me it's quite important it's a test to see which is better um and to get things right so pro range I love it. Absolutely bridge. It's cheap. It works well. And that finish out the airbrush, that is stunning. 
So just goes to show you. So there we go. I've definitely waffled on for way too long today about 2K. You're probably sick of hearing about it, but hopefully we won't hear about it anymore. So let's go back to me, and I'm going to waffle even more. Ta -da. Right, there you go. So, yeah, interesting. Um, I'm sticking with my Pro Range for now, I think. I'm going to try uh, this new spray and keep it a bit further away, etc. Um, and I think the um, single semi-wet tack coat and a full wet coat is the way to go. And I'm going to stick at that now for quite a while and see what we get. Um, not all 2K jobs are going to be the same. You're going to get some problems on some of it be dust or contaminants or whatever. Uh, but after doing so many, I've got pretty good at keeping them very, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, all the same, basically. Continuity, keeping that going well. Um, but the spoon certainly showed how forgiving the Pro Range is. And while the quartz sprayed well on the spoon, no reactions at all. So the car must have been me. Um, I think I just literally didn't stir the thinner in. Um, it shows that the Pro Range is the better quality. Uh, it's cheaper, it's half the price. It's crazy how good that stuff is, it really is. Um, so myself and Sam are doing a new one, we're gonna get one and carry on using that. And I'm gonna stick a quartz up on eBay, it's brand new, I've got the receipt, I've used like 30 mil, not even 30 mil of the stuff, and I'll stick it up and somebody, you know, full-size car user can buy it, whatever, just get some money back off it because it was expensive. Um, and that's that, and the Volvo come along well, happy with that. Um, bit guts over that 206, but it's what you get for switching and changing products, keep it what you know. That's my, my motto, and I'll be living by that from now on, I know that. Um, and that's it, really. So, yeah, like I say, come on Friday. Make sure you look at our two-hour speed build on Friday night. It'll be good fun. Uh, if you've got any ideas for stuff you'd like to see on the show, let us know. Uh, any feedback or whatever. And, of course, as always, check out the Sassy Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, my Live of the Bench, uh, sorry, my, the Live of the Bench Facebook page for the show, the Off-Air Hangout group for the Off-Air Hangouts, and my... Uh, Paul ISM Facebook page as well where all my modelling work goes uh, don't forget the GT build ends tonight the wheeled SIG on the forum ends tonight and the new tracks and wings starts tomorrow and the Ferrari buddy build ends on the 19th of July so there we go, I've rambled on way too long, I'll catch you all later take care, bye bye